Hey, what's up YouTube? Scott, Scotty Tradition back with another video. Um, got a one package mailed in today. I already took it out of the package. Um, it's another big uh, top 250 set edition. Um, it's a card you really don't see all that often. I think there was only maybe two sales all of last year that I could see. Um, two or three, something like that. Um, but it's a card that doesn't sell a whole lot. Um, so let's just get into it right away. And then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of have a little discussion about the set itself because it is a really interesting set um, that not a lot of people, maybe you guys know something about it, maybe you don't, but we're going to talk about it anyways because um, it's something that I didn't know a lot about until I did some research on it. So go ahead and get into it here. Wow, such a cool card. Go ahead and show that to you. The 1971... Greatest Moments, Thurman Munson. Pretty cool card. Um, so, there's a big story about this set. Um, this is a top 250 card, so that's why I nabbed it. And like I said, they don't come up for sale a whole lot. Um, and of course it has his uh, AL Rookie of the Year as being, you know, the moment on the card. And basically the card depicts um, Thurman Munson portrait and there's actually 55 cards in this set. This is card number one in that set. And there's Thurman Munson and then it depicts like an action shot on the right hand side. Um, as you can see this card's graded to PSA 4. Um, the reason for that is it's because these cards were uh, miscut a lot and centering is just terrible on them. Plus the black borders, there's a lot of chipping issues and things like that. So I'll give you one, guys one more look at the card here. And then we'll kind of get into this 71 Finest Moments set and talk about what it's all about. Um, so like I mentioned, it is a top 2 uh, 50 card in the hobby set, so I'm just going to kind of read you a little bit about that. Um, it's the first card in the set um, of one of the most condition-sensitive sets of the era. Uh, this great tops issue, which features many of the game's best players from the period, contained 55 cards throughout. Um, it has an accomplishment down there, of course, in this case, too. They measure about two and a half inches by four and three quarter inches. So it's in your tall boy kind of PSA holder. Um, and Thurman Munson, the first Yankee captain since Lou Gehrig was selected to start the set um, after being named to the AL Rookie of the Year in 70. Um, then it talks about Munson's accomplishments and basically um, he won the Gold Glove Award three years in a row from 73 to 75. Um, beloved by his teammates and fans. Um, of course, uh, Munson actually, I believe, passed away in a plane crash, if I'm not mistaken, um, in 1979. So he died died young. But I'll give you guys one more look at the card here, then we'll talk about the set overall. So basically, like I said, this, this set is 55 total cards. Um, this is card number one. There are no 10s graded out of the entire 71 Finest Moments sets based on the PSA registry. There have been 4,500 total cards graded and no 10s. So there's only been 69s graded out of that as well. So um, a lot of people say you could almost consider a 9 a 10 just because of all the inherent flaws within that set. Um, now here, the Munson card itself, I only have this in the grade of a 4, but it's actually not too bad of a grade considering that there's no 10s there's only one nine and there's no eights. So for the longest time, PSA seven was the highest grade that was found and there was only a, a small handful of those uh, in existence. Um, but a lot of the cards above this PSA four have qualifiers in them. So there are like five miscuts or five off centers and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, a four with no qualifiers is actually a pretty darn good grade for this card. Um, and Basically, um, there are some very uh, interesting questions surrounding the set. So for one thing, why is why are there no Hank Aarons in the set? And why are there no Roberto Clemente's? Two of the biggest players of all time. They're, you know, we're still around in the early 70s. And these cards, you know, focused on players and their accomplishments from the, you know, late 60s, early 70s. So why is there no Roberto Clemente and Hank Aaron? You know, arguably the two biggest stars of the time. Why are they not in this set? That's kind of strange, right? Um, and I don't think anybody still knows the answer to that question. So if you guys have any opinions on that, be, feel free to share them. Um, and basically the consensus is that this is, was a test issue, this whole set, and it was only available 
in Brooklyn and the New York area is where it was distributed. It, this is not a nationally distributed set or anything like that. Um, they're, they're, they're very hard to find. Um, and then there was a lot of debate over how these were distributed. Were they distributed in boxes, wax packs? Um, the base of the consensus is they did come in wax packs, although nobody has yet to find a wax pack that they actually came in. So there's actually no proof of the, them coming in wax packs, other than that some cards um, had staining on them, wax staining. Um, I don't see too much on this card, but I haven't got a chance to really look it over yet. Um, and I guess th there was somebody that found, reportedly found a wax box of this stuff um, that, that housed these cards, but no, no packs themselves. But if you found a box, they most likely were in packs, even though nobody's found a pack. Um, and basically, um, it was these cards were from a card company called Card Collector Company, which was kind of a mail order company uh, in New York at the time. Um, but there's more uh, obscurity surrounding that company in that there was actually a fire there, and uh, a lot of the stock of cards of this 71 Greatest Moments set was destroyed um, due to flooding from the, the sprinkler system from the fire. So actually, you actually will still find cards today that have severe water damage. And a lot of the stock was destroyed. So that's another kind of factor making these cards really rare. Um, and then within that, there's actually 10 cards in the set. Um, Clyde Wright, uh, Kurt Morton, Sal Bando, Burt Campanaris, Reggie Jackson, Alex Johnson, Hoyt Wilhelm, Bill Melton, Rico Carney, and Joe Pepitone. Um, on their right edge, there's like a little thumbnail uh, half moon looking indentation on each of those and that that is because of where it was cut on the set on the uh, when they were cut there must have been some kind of uh, flaw it must have been bumping up against something because all 10 of those cards exhibit that like weird half moon artifact on them um, and that's on the right edge of the card and and, ba and basically all these cards um, I, I guess the Thurman Munson was on the top of the sheet that it was cut on um, so basically uh, most of these cards were all prone to cutting issues. Um, a lot of diamond cuts, which are, you know, it'll have the image on the card almost look like a slight diamond shape. Um, this card is kind of like that. If you look at the, the picture, well, you can see that tilt in the actual image itself. So probably didn't have the best cutting quality of technology at the time. So, um, but I'm just happy to knock this card off the list for the top 250 set. Um, this is my third top 250 set of pickup of the year. I think this is card number 43 or 44, if I'm not mistaken. Um, haven't been picking up a whole lot for the set this year, but I've been accumulating a lot. So at some point, I'm going to run into something nice that I, that I want. Um, I've just been kind of really scrutinizing and really cautious with my pickups so far this year. So, but like I said, only I could only find two sales of this card all last year. So to me, this was it was a good idea to pick this one up when I saw it. Um, did buy it in an auction. Um, it had a minimum bid on it, and I just threw out that minimum bid because um, this card was a lot. It, it looked really decent for the grade of a four, to be honest. Um, there were other cards that I've seen that looked a lot worse that sold. So to me, it was a, uh, a no-brainer to check this one off the list. So not the prettiest card in the world, <laughs> I have to say, just because of the cutting. But it it does have a cool story behind it, and I know it's a card that maybe a lot of you you know possibly don't have in your possession just because of the relative obscurity of it so thanks for everybody for watching um hope you enjoyed this little discussion on 71 tops greatest moments and i'll talk to you all again soon you guys have a great weekend